Tractors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Monday, Monday, the 24th of June. And this is the last week of June. It's going to be really a fascinating week because we're seeing such a divergence. Here, let me just show you something. Let me go to the 10-minute E-mini chart. Look, E-mini had this uh, move last night. It had a big. Uh, it made a peak D at about four o'clock on Friday. You remember D is what we look for, and then it went sideways for uh, all almost all weekend. And then suddenly last night when the market opened. At six o'clock, and a little bit of a pop, and then it weakened and it splattered down, and then it started a brand new move from about nine o'clock last night. Goes peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D, rests a little bit, brand new A, B, C, D, rests a little bit, and then goes on to an E, and then fails at the high right there, and that was at four thirty this morning at fifty five forty six point zero zero. Then it starts a move and it treats the two hundred period moving average. As a kind of a, a testing area, a magnet area, it goes to it, it goes under it, goes over it, under it, over it. And then it has a very sharp pullback, and the pullback goes to the low of the day, which is at 5519.75. So the way it was handling these uh, 5525 level, and I just popped into the den uh, very early this morning to say, that um, I can't remember right now exactly what I typed in. Doesn't matter. What I typed in basically was to say that there was uh, resistance at the 55, 30. I think it was at that time 37 level, which was the 200 period moving average in the 10 minute chart. But we could go down. And if 55, 25 was taken out, we could hit the 55, 19 area. Well, we didn't get there. We went to a low at 950 of 55, 29. And we've had this sudden huge spike to the upside. So now, and there's only a leg A in the 10-minute chart. Let me, give, let me give you a little bit of uh, overview right here. So let's go to the Dow. The Dow, so for, for investors in, the, uh, in my market newsletter, my opening call, so we've had long positions in the three times long uh, – the UDOW have had long positions from March of 2020 and then again October of 2022 in the diamonds. We've had those, kept those core positions, traded around it a lot. And then uh, we did have, the, we have, we've got the short position in the DOG. It's just a one to one and it is a, um, a small long position in the short uh, ETF, the DOG. But at the same time, we still have those three times three time long positions, and I'm I'm looking at this and I'm saying, you know, that means you're overall bullish, and I love the fact that on Friday the nine period moving average went over the fourteen, uh, the fact that the stochastic finally has gone over eighty percent at eighty five percent of the daily, so you've got a buy mode. It will be negating the uh, the DOG position very soon. But you've got a buy mode. And in the cup, going to a second cup, the W for soft W formation of the weekly chart of the Dow, same as in the diamonds. Look, diamonds, a little bit different. We've already gone to leg D. In the diamonds, it's a little bit ahead, as is the do this thing because your D in the daily chart. But look at the cup formation going to a second cup formation with a 401 round number all time high on the 16th of May in the Dow Diamonds. All right. So, with that said, look, the nine period moving average in the weekly chart is still fabulous. Ex excellent action. The YM, I must just check this out. Whoops, type it in over here. The YM is the futures of the Dow. Yep, that's in leg D. Very nice move up. So overall, um, we are we are looking positively on the Dow. And now this is going to be interesting because on the S and P, look, here's the S and P. The S and P trading 
up 23 at 5487, uh, a little bit, just a little bit under the 5505.53 all time high. Now, we did start a small uh, short, an aggressive short small position in the S&P uh, three times short. With it's really such a tight stop. It's uh, I think like one percent in a three times uh, in a three times position. That's like uh, you know that's just I want to. It's either going to work or it's not going to work. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. That's just the way it is. However, look, the nine is still over the fourteen in the daily chart, and the price is over the nine. The MACD is good. Stochastics at ninety one percent. That's fabulous. On balance volumes pulling back. Relative strength pulling back, but still very good. And the weekly chart, as I've been saying for weeks, months, the weekly charts are still fabulous. So what is going on? Well, we'll see what's going on because, look, the QQQ is down 52 cents, 50 cents at 479.64 under the 486.86 high of five sessions ago. Weekly charts fabulous. Even the daily is above the nine period moving average. The nine's over the 14, way over the 14. MACD's good. The, the relative strength, the gray line here, is pulling back. Still good, but pulling back. And this is interesting. Stochastic was way up in the 90% area. Now it's at 88%. Fabulous. On balance volumes pulled back. So what is happening? What's happening is this. That you've had this rotation, we've been anticipating this rotation. We are short the uh, SMHs, uh, an aggressive small position, but that's not the point. Point is, it did go to a peak D at 279.57, and it's now trading at 261. You say, oh, well, yeah, what's the big deal? 261 from uh, 79. That's only 18 points. It's not even 8 percent or something, but it's the first. Pretty decent pullback you've had since the one that was at 250.85 uh, back in late May. And it was also only four sessions. This is not even four. This is two sessions, but three if you include the actual reversal on Thursday. Well, this is telling us the story. And that's the thing I was being, I've been harping about for the last mm, two weeks or so, saying in this, my cycle work, I I don't have any clues other than peak Ds in the Chapman Wave methodology. And those have been suggesting that we could have a daily pullback, but the weekly charts were still very good. But if there's a rotation that we just might see, now I can put it all together, the XLK, which is the uh, S&P Select Tech Spider Fund, pullback. But while it's pulling back, what's, what's really important about this is that Look, the technicals are so strong. So now I'm going to go to the thing that's been driving me a little nuts here, but I'm going to do it again. And that's to show you using, oh, 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 I don't have it. Uh, I do have this, which is the SMHs. So this has got the Chapman Wave, automated Chapman Wave support and resistance levels. So 276.30 was the last resist, automated resistance level in my daily, weekly, monthly, 120-minute chart uh, of the uh, SMHs, a semiconductor ETF, and it went just a tad higher, and now it's pulled back. Now you look for support levels. Uh, it's gone right to the 266, so I think this is a work in progress. I think that we're going to see some kind of rotation in the semiconductors, and we're going to see a little divergence now, as the rotation says, Dow is actually leading. IWM is actually starting to follow the Dow. The s and is kind of stalling, but hasn't broken down. The um, semiconductors are pulling back. Up right back. Dow's up 327. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so let me just ask a question here. Is this in the, in the one minute chart of the E-mini, a, a peak D, an out starting to pull back, and that pullback is getting... Didn't do that on purpose, did I? Yes, I did. And that pullback is going to tell us a lot about, about is this a single leg A to the upside in the five minute and a single leg A to the upside in the 10 minute? We'll know very, very soon. If at 55.49, we take out the 54, uh, 50, is that 55? Yeah, 55.49, we take out the 55.42 level and then make that 55.38, 200 period moving average already important support. We'll see. It's just a work in progress. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go... What? Oh, shouldn't have done that on the fly. Okay, there it is. That's what I wanted to do. Here we go. So what we're looking at is... Um, the XLK, which is the S&P Select Tech Spider Fund, is pulling back some. It still looks fantastic in terms of the daily chart and the weekly chart and the monthly chart. But just on a very short-term basis, probably I'm going to do this right now, show you the 120-minute chart right there. We've pulled back, and now you can see the 120-minute the chart, 9 period moving average. It's 120 minutes. I have to wait for a full 120 minutes. But at this particular point, it's showing an S for the first time since it crossed positive with a gap up at 11.30 a.m. on the 5th of June. This is the first time it's actually turned negative. So I'm just watching that very closely. Now let's do something else. What I wanted to do is um, finish up uh, with the gold. Uh, let me do this. So the GDX. Now, first to the G GC. This is the continuous contract. Yeah, it's pulling back for underneath the nine period moving average, and the nine is under the 14. And it just says the weekly chart is really has to hold, and it's been holding sideways really in a digestive phase. If gold at 2341, up 10 right now, at any, any day closes under 2300, that's going to be a big deal. I mean, 40 point, 41 points these days is not such a big deal. On the upside, if it can close above 2362, I think that that's going to make a difference. So about 20 points higher. Look at silver. Silver chart um, is 
in a in a down channel, it gets repelled to the channel wave inside track uh, repellent zone. That's the down channel's little three sixteenth of an inch channel, and it keeps coming down, holds support. But it, the weekly chart is actually a little bit better, and so is the monthly. A little bit better in the 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 physical look of the uh, metal itself, a chart. And if you look at the GDX, that's the gold miners. You can see that channel much more clearly. Um, it keeps going to, I haven't done this, I'll do it now. I said I'm going to wait to do it. I want you to see what happened over the next two days. That was Thursday and Friday. So now we've got it, now I can put it in and say, okay, now it's worth taking the time to put this in because it keeps stalling right on the line of the resistance of the channel wave inside track repellent zone right there. And that weekly chart is holding very nicely above the nine, the nine's above the 14, but um, it's really going sideways. It hasn't broken. It needs to get to the 3583 level. This is the GDX to say, uh, you know, I, I have strength. Don't don't rule me out. Now, I, I, I'm looking at this, and I must admit, looking at some of the gold and silver stocks, some of them look really bad. Some of them have held very well. We, we've gone to a, a silver stock that has held very well, but um, it's at a very important moment right here because if, if it breaks down, you can have a very quick decline. But at this point, it's holding, and it's kind of impressive that it is holding. Now, I wanted to show you something else that uh, I'm going to go to. Uh, here we go. Bonds. Talk about the inside track repellent zone. Look, there it is. It's just above it in the weekly. This is the 30-year T-bond continuous contract. It, it hasn't broken above decisively, but it's holding above the green line, and that's really important. Looking at the uh, daily chart, it's just in a consolidation. And if you look at the yields, look at TBT, that gives you a sense of the yields. They're coming down, making lower lows and lower highs. They broke the support level of the inside track uh, in the up channel for the weekly chart, and that's got a, a potential to make an arch and come down. If yields really come down, you're going to see it gives some help to the Toll Brothers and all the, all the um, home builders. And if you're looking at BLDR, that is the builder, oops, where did it go? There it is. Builder's first source, ink, building materials, uh, manufacturers, components, etc. down at the lows, uh, had an absolutely magnificent move into the two. 15-ish uh, area, and then peak D in the weekly, peak D in the monthly has come down pretty sharply. Not as sharp as you would expect, but pretty sharply. And here we are looking at um, at 143.57, up 34 cents. It's in this base of support at about 140. For starts to close under 130 for two out of three sessions this week or next week, um, that's, that's going to be a big negative. So far, it's holding. I needed to do sort of it before. Oh, that's what I want to do. NVIDIA. So NVIDIA is down a little bit, down 4.5 at 121.90. I had that peak at 140.76. I did notice some round numbers um, intraday, but they didn't hold. And if they don't hold, it means that they were negated. So it does say that people were looking at this as some kind of a, maybe a topping action, but some kind of action that was important to them that they had to grab it without putting in 0.23 or whatever it is, for the digits, but it just said at the round number, and they haven't. Uh, held, it hasn't held that way. So this is just saying to me, this could be a little bit more serious as a decline in the daily chart. I'm not talking about the weekly yet. That's still fantastic. But in the daily chart, and if NVIDIA at any point takes out the low of, it's 170.01. The low of the 10th of June, it trades under 117. I'd say if it closes under 116 at any point, that's a, that's a long way to go. That's six, seven, six, five, six points. If it does that by Friday of this week, uh, then we're looking at a little more time in terms of the consolidation. Then the issue with Schwab this morning. Oh, uh, oh, is that just uh, something else? I'm looking at Schwab, and I must say, oh, Schwab is up very nicely, up 94 cents at 74.28. That's good action. I was looking at the AIA, and I said, we're going to hold off buying anything right now. You know, from the Dow and the IWM action, I'm really impressed with what's going on here. 
I like what I see. You see this H pattern here in the IAI, the iShares Broker Dealer and Security ETF. There's a chance that this becomes a cup formation. It's going to need a little bit of work to do that. But look at the weekly, how it's held the 9 over the 14 and it's above the 9. All of that's very good. You know what? Thanks for mentioning that in the den. D and I, I'm, I'm kind of impressed with the action, and I believe it's telling me that buying is coming into the market now. This is what I thought: is that stuff like Bob put, it just put to pull back because you know I said about a week or so ago that I had some very negative readings in the uh, Bitcoin futures. And that Bitcoin should be pulling back and needs to hold 61. Well, now uh, it needs to hold 62. It says 61.43. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians out. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, folks. Welcome back. 
So we're looking at the, here's the one, five, and 10 minute chart. I'd said that was a peak D. We're watching to see whether it pulls back. It's done a one to one to the downside, but the 55.39 is the 200 period exponential moving average support. That might become a magnet if it pulls back just a little bit more. And you've got a possibility of a single leg A to the upside in the five and the 10 minute chart. We don't know. The bike just keeps coming in. So I don't want to dismiss that, but I do want to say that. Uh, let me just do this, okay? I do want to say that within the context of the overall market itself, let's just go, look, Bitcoin, sharp pull back to the downside. Um, and I think that's going to continue just a little bit longer. 55,000, I think, would be the target if the uh, 57,000 level support uh, is taken out. And most importantly, what we're looking at is if you go to the IYT, IYT is the transportation index, there's, there's a rally going on. So, I'm trying to put this together and I'm trying to say to you, this is a very mixed market in the sense that before we had the Dow week, 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 as the semiconductor, the S&P, the QQQ, the XLK were going to all time highs. We've had a rotation now over the last since Thursday intraday where the Dow has continued higher. The IWM has started to rally. And the IYT, which is the transportation average ETF, is running very nicely at this particular point, up uh, 76 cents at 55.02, up 1.18%. That's important. The weekly chart still looks lousy, but the, the fact that the daily chart is actually moving like this says, this is part of what I was talking about when I, for my subscribers when I did my overview uh, video over the weekend and Friday for for the for the, uh, reviewing and looking at where we are in terms of the uh, uh, where we've been, where we're going to, and the, just the the chance that we don't have a massive pullback in June, but instead what we see is this rotation that says some of the very important key movers to the upside might take a breather. But with, even within that, look, Apple uh, is up today to at 209.63, but it's holding the nine period moving average. It made a peak C1, C2, it acts like a peak D, top just recently in the daily, but it's just a hint of a top. I haven't got a down arrow. It's not even a sell signal yet. So it's holding so well. All the technicals are pretty good. The weekly chart. Only way I can count it is to say it really looks like it is a peak B, and we can have a pullback, and then later on in the summer we start heading towards the uh, 228, 232 area. And as leg C in the monthly chart, look at um, Amazon. Amazon is running a little bit. It's up 47 cents at 189.65. And look what happened. It just... It had a really good rally from the 174 area. 19170 was the high back in May. Pulls back to early June. It goes to the 174 area. And now it's trading at 189. And the nine's over the 14. The price is over the nine. Technicals are good, except the stochastics only at 81. And the unbalanced volumes worry me a little bit in the sense that it is not uh, confirming the rally. And not only that, Today's high was around number 191.00. Day is young, not just an hour into the trading day, but 191.70 was the last high. It was the all time high of May. So I'm watching this very closely because I drew in the rectangle. You know, I did these webinars that I have online for subscribers to peruse as many, many times as they want about uh, different aspects of the Chapman Wave methodology. One of them is all these different rectangles narrow rectangle, wide rectangle. Rectangle that produces a rally that within the same time frame can give you a peak A, B, C, and even a D that goes just under, right on, or just above the previous side, and then pulls back quite sharply, or it just makes a big arch formation or a big cup formation. So there are all these different patterns. Well, this one says you you went to a single leg to the upside, and then you stalled, and at this particular point, you're above the 188.65 high that was made back in July of 2021, that was the major high, and you're pulling back, you pull back to 81, over 100 points down. So Amazon doing very nicely right here. They, um, so 
that just say, should I do that? Yeah, I'll do that now. Why not? We've got plenty of time. I'll do a left side, right side price time match. So I'm going from the high that was made at 191.70 early May. I'm going to go to the plumb line. In this case, the plumb line is right there. That's the low that was made at 173.87. Okay. And I'm going to do this because today would be the day. <laughs> Interesting, huh? Look, so we've got left side, right side price time match. That's that V-shaped pattern. And it takes you to tomorrow to get to 191.70. This becomes red or pink. Let's differentiate. This becomes the plumb line right here. Actual low, there it is. So look at that, number of bars from the high of 191.70 down to 173.87 equals, so far, almost exactly. The number of bars to the right, we've got one more day to go to try to get to 171.70 or higher. And that's that pattern that we call the bar symmetry or left side, left side right side, price, time match. Bar symmetry is much easier to say. And to remember, there you go, cup formation. All right, so that's Amazon. So let's do this. And, and I had said Microsoft, I didn't do anything with it on Monday. We were talking about it. But uh, Microsoft has this pattern that I called, oh, uh, there it is. We were waiting for it, called the uh, Chapman Wave right, stalk leg formation. Just moving it there. Oh, Chapman Wave stalk leg formation. And we're waiting for this to go. Peak C, it's now leg C. It didn't look like it was going to do it, but I believe in this technique. And there it is, leg C. And we've got a pullback to come, and there may be one more spike to a fractional high. And then I think we start to see a pullback in Microsoft. But that pullback is everything is so technically good. It's just going to be a purely technical overbought situation unless something happens over the next uh, geopolitical, who knows, to really tank the market. But at this particular point, look at the support you've got. Uh, everything's very good. Um, and I should also mention, so we could have bought this because we were expecting D. Even now, we're still expecting a D. But I just, because we're long from way, way lower, over 100 points lower, I just... At this particular point, I don't want to get too carried away. I just want to let it play out, and I think we're going to let this play out. All the technicals are good going to leg C. Today's high is 452.75. So if this is the high, and later on, it does throughout the day, it doesn't go higher than that, and pulls back tomorrow, then this will be the level to start breaking above to go to D. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's of 372. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. 
Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, so I had a question here about, so you can see the signal leg A up starting to weaken, both in the five and 10 minute, but the question came in about rig. So rig, uh, this is Transocean Limited Offshore Drilling Oil and Gas, uh, this is trading at 5.32, up 16 cents, and Friday it made a, a, the 5.10, 5.10 low that was made back on the uh, 1st of May, um, ran all the way up to 6.40. We tried to have a long, uh, and it didn't work, took a little bit of a loss, but then I just stepped aside. I said, it, it's just not working, even though crude oil was moving higher. And even now, there's a sudden, they keep, it keeps having these spikes. So what was the low on Friday? The low was 5.18. So it's 8 cents above, and today it spiked a little higher. The uh, MACD is trying, the histograms improving just a little bit. The relative strength is kind of weak. On balance volume is weak. The stochastic is weak. The 914 is terribly weak. All I can say is it's failed so many times, Transocean, offshore drilling and oil and gas. I'm very suspicious. Now, uh, uh, you might have, um, Piki, you might have this from a long time ago. If that's the case, the question is, do I add now? Um, if it's a brand new position, I'd, let me just show you something very interesting. Look, crude oil has had a very nice move to the upside. It's in leg B, peak B maybe, but a leg B. It held the 200 period moving average. Uh, sorry. Yeah, right there. Back in 2022, it was in November, and then it ran higher. It went from the uh, 66s all the way to the 85s, 86 area. Then it pulled back sharply, but it keeps holding the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone. And this has moved a little bit because it gets smoothed out as a continuous contract. That's really where it is. So if you look at it this way, you can say, wow, um, the nine period moving average on Friday of this past week went green, and that's important, and it's holding. So crude oil says, I'm in a range, I'm moving to the upside, I'm making higher highs and higher lows, but the technical aspect of my the weekly chart is in the process of improving while the monthly chart is really just saying, hey, it's just a sideways move. So I'm trying to put that together to show you USO um, is obviously pretty much the same thing. That's the United States oil fund. But now let's look at the um, rig, which uh, has, I mean, it's it's the offshore drilling oil and gas but it's saying, I just wanted to show you the NG. The NG did have a really good rally. That's the natural gas. But look how it keeps coming back so sharply. It's off the lows, thank goodness. But it really is struggling. So now let me go back to Ray. I'm going to suggest that at this particular time, exactly as we're speaking, that at 5.31, I can say with just a little bit more confidence than I could have said before, that this is a rally that, has the potential to hold the five 
5.18 low that was made on Friday. Between 5.18 and 5.10, the low that was made uh, 1st of May, it's, it, the chances are that it could hold that low, but it mustn't break. It's at 5.31 right now. I'm talking really microcosm act to action right now. This is not what you look at, Peaky, for the for, for longer term. But the only way you can get the longer term is to get in at some point. And I'm just suggesting to you that if I move this cup formation right here, this pattern that I've drawn in, which didn't go back to the high, but is trying to make a W formation right here with that double bottom low in the 518 area, I think going in right now at 531, I do have to give you a stop. I'm getting, going to give you a stop of, if you don't mind, it's time and days, uh, time, price and days. So I'm going to say in here, this is your added position. If it's a fresh position for anyone listening who, who, would, who would have asked the question, what do I do? I'd say, yeah, it applies to you as well. You can go in here at 5.31 within a couple of pennies up or down, doesn't matter. But just on a visual basis, I wouldn't actually put it in yet. You've got to give it a little bit of room. I'd give it a little bit of room to say to, today's low is 5.17. Oh, so it went to 5.17. Now, how can that be? Did I misread that? 5.05. Oh, thank goodness I came back to, to look at it. It was 5.10, 1st of May, 5.05 on Friday. Oh, that makes a big difference. It went under, it closed above it, and now you're running. So that just says is the, the, the plan is the same, except I can make some, some adjustments to it. Start your position here at 5.32. Today's low of 5.17. <sighs> wow, 5.17. Oh, no, that's not bad. I give it 20 cents, 25 cents over the next two days. I don't want I don't want to see it take out, but I'm making this a mental stop, not a physical stop. As a physical stop, I'm going to have to say 510. If it goes under 510, it's probably going to take out the 505 level. So 510. But this is the plan. Look at the, I bet the 10 minute, the 120 minute chart. There it is. That's what I wanted to see. See the, the, the 10 minute chart? I keep saying the 10 because I got I use that uh, in the E mini. Um, this is the 120 minute chart. If it can take out the high that was made on uh, 11.30 on Friday of 138, uh, not Friday, of last week, 138, if it can go to today's high is 5.36. Yes, here we go. If it takes out 538 or touches 538, then that's a really good sign. So I'm going to say to you today is Monday. I'm going to go all the way through Wednesday. I'm making a 5.10 stop. Start your position. If it goes to 538, I still wouldn't do anything, but it's got to do that by Wednesday in the show that I'm doing right now between 10 and 11. It's got to do it by then. If it do takes a little too long, Time's run out, and it's just gonna. It, it could very well fail. Hope that helps you. And M U R M U R is Murphy, I think Murphy Oil. Am I correct? M U R. I wonder if I've still got it notated. Nope, I don't. <laughs> Disappear. Is that Murphy? Yep, it's Murphy Oil Company. Gosh, I followed this for decades, but maybe it's changed. Let me just see Murphy Oil. Oh, it isn't decades. It's only since 2014. All right. Well, as you can see in the monthly chart, it's kind of stalled. It's not doing badly at all monthly-wise. Um, and it had. this is what we're looking at in rig. You want to see it moving up into the previous highs. And this is what it's doing. So Murphy Oil is starting to come back a little bit. I don't like the weekly chart too much. I don't like the monthly. The daily has to save the day. That means the daily at 40.49 MUR is a symbol. You want to see it trading at 41.37. 41.37? Yes, far. Fantastic. The, the high was 41.36. Did it all by eye. 41.37. And I would like to say by Wednesday afternoon, if it does that, these um, oil, also refine, I guess, stocks are going to do well. RRC, RRC is, is this Royal Caribbean? Oh, range, range, not romances, oh, range resources. <laughs> I did this a long time ago. 
Yeah, this is also on the 200 feet moving average trying to bounce. This one's a little different. I, this one, no, this one's working too hard. It is on the 200 feet moving average. I'm just going to say, I'm going to skip this one. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, final segment coming up. The Dow is up 390. S&P's up 591. Is that a divergence? The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, folks, we're back, and we're looking at, um, let's see, I had a, a, a statement made here. Yeah, U.S. wants Netherlands, Japan to further restrict chip-making equipment to China. Yeah, I think this is going to be the sort of thing that just kind of filters into the semiconductors as they take a breather right now. And the other one was XPEV. Could I look at XPEV? Let me just do that. XPEV. Okay, XPV. Oh, two things. Yeah, XPV had a big spike up. I don't know if that well, that must have been real, but it was a really big spike to about the 1051 area back around the 20th of May, and then it came all the way back down and it hit the seven seven. 18, I think, and it's trading right now at 819. Yeah, this is just in a sideways move. It can bounce, but I think that the lower highs and lower lows theme right now for XPeng, the designs, develops, manufactures smart EVs, electric vehicles. I just think it's kind of stuck for now. It's doing fine over the last couple of days. Not great. It's doing fine. And until it can really trade in the 828 to 835 area uh, and start to really push into the mid 8s, uh, right now, I just think it's kind of sideways. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for, let me just sum it up right now. 
There's sectors that have had fabulous moves and they're taking a breather, Bitcoin being one of them. I also think that SMH is being one of them. And you look, now it's red. So it's down 674 at 258.51. One of the reasons why I said to subscribers is that we want to try to get the outer limits of all these, these particular instruments because then you've got a cushion. So now because we got in and reasonably well in the short side, We've got this cushion that could be bounces and all that, and hopefully it will survive because once the semis start to trade in the 253 area, then the night grid moving average will start to get closer to the 14. It hasn't done that for a long time. So I'm just saying make it very special. We've raised cash we like that. There are still stocks, like I say, Microsoft. Um, is, is doing very gently making slightly higher highs. I think it's getting close to some kind of a pullback. It's rotational. Be very selective. I see no reason why you don't hold a good bit